In this chapter, we're going to talk about the electric potential and electric potential energy. These are very important. Many biomedical applications, as well as automotive, these uh, principles are used in, in all of circuitry, electronic circuitry, etc. So very, very important principles we're talking about here that hopefully many of you will use in your, in your disciplines and, and, and the things that you do. The first um, thing we'd like to talk about is the, called the potential energy. And then we will um, branch off into the electric potential, which is a different quantity. So there's something called the potential energy. There's something called the electric, well, it's called the electric potential energy is what we're going to be talking about in this section. Then we'll talk in the next section, well, in, in fact, in this section, about the electric potential. So the two sound the same, potential, electric potential energy versus electric potential. The only difference being the word energy, and that's the key to the difference. So just like when you have a, a basketball that you're holding up high and releasing from a particular height, there's potential energy. And the type of potential energy associated with the basketball being up is called gravitational potential energy. And then as it drops, that gravitational potential energy drops along with it, mg times h. We also get a similar situation with electric charges. There's electrical potential energy. And what do we mean by that? If we have a positive test charge and it's close to some other positive charge, those are repelled. Um, the two positive charges repel each other and there's electric potential energy associated with that, um, th that positive charge being near to the, to the uh, other positive charge. And as the positive charge moves towards, say, some negative charge, its electric potential energy decreases in the same way that the basketball's gravitational potential energy decreases as its height decreases. So three definitions, uh, three concepts and one slide. That's got to be a record. Let's define the electric potential energy first. And it's defined in terms of its change in electric potential energy. It actually never matters what the electric potential energy itself is. All that ever matters is what the change in electric potential energy is. So this is the one with the, with the word energy attached to it. And it's like a gravitational potential energy. So the change in electric potential energy, electric potential energy, is the negative, is defined as the negative of the work done by the electric force. And you say, oh, hang on just a second, what's the electric force? And I say, that's just the um, Coulomb's law. The force K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, that's the electric force. And we're defining the change in the electric potential energy as the negative of the work done by that electric force. So that's a lot of words, but actually you've seen this before. In first semester, we defined the gravitational potential energy as the change in the work done by the gravitational force. We're just doing the same thing here with electric potential energy. So EPE is how we denote the electric potential energy. <coughs> this delta means change, means final minus initial. So that's what I mean here. A change in anything is its final value at point B minus its initial value at point A. Um, and so that change in electric potential energy is equal to the negative 
of the work done by the electric force in taking this charge from point A to point B. So we can actually see that in this particular case, if we have a nice uniform electric field as we've talked about between two parallel plates, then the electric force is Q times E. You might say, hang on a minute, Dr. Edwards. I thought you said it was supposed to be Coulomb's law. And I say, yes, it essentially is Coulomb's law. But in the later part of chapter 18, we showed that the electric force was equal to the test charge itself times the electric field. Forget which concept number that was. F equals QE. And that, if I give you the electric field and I give you a test charge, then you multiply the test charge Q times E and that'll give us both the force on the, on the object. And it's equivalent to the Coulomb force. It works out to be the, the same as the Coulomb force if you take into account all these individual charges. So there's the force. That's the electric force. And it's exerting this force and, and the object is going from point A to point B. So the work done by that force is denoted by this WAB. This minus sign is part of the definition. It's the negative of the work done. So say that with me. The change in the electric potential energy equals the negative of the work done by the electric force. Okay, or write it down or do something so that you've got that in your heads. So that's how the electric potential energy is defined. Let's define the electric potential. So now we've left the word energy off. What's the electric potential all about? The electric potential is the electric potential energy, EPE, per unit charge, divided by the charge. So the electric potential is denoted by the letter V. Denoted by a letter V. And it is the electric potential energy divided by the charge, Q naught. That's it, it's just a definition how it's defined. Now, let's take a look at the units for both of these. The electric potential energy is measured in joules. It's an energy, a real live bona fide energy. MGH is measured in joules, one half kx squared, one half mv squared. All of those are energies measured in joules. So it's a real, true, honest to goodness energy. What about the electric potential? Well, if the electric potential is the electric potential energy that's measured in joules, divided by a charge that's measured in coulombs, then the units for the electric potential are, are joules per coulomb. So there's the unit for the electric potential. And that unit is given a special name. It's called the volt, V-O-L-T. And say, well, hang on, Dr. Edwards, before I ever took physics, I'd really never heard of a joule. But I've certainly heard of a volt, because I know I have a 12-volt battery in my car, and I have one and a half volt batteries in, um, that power my flashlight. Is this volt the same as that volt? And my answer is, yep or doodle, it is. It's the same volt. Uh, so this is the definition of the volt. The volt is a joule per coulomb. And the abbreviation for volt is V. So really, the electric potential itself is measured in volts. <laughs> and 
Uh, so the electric potential, one thing that's can potentially confusing here is that we use the same symbol for the physical quantity, electric potential, V, as we do for the unit that we measure the electric potential in, which is in volts. But that may not be such a bad thing because that reminds you that the two, two are so intimately connected. When we say electric potential, we really mean um, something, a voltage. Okay, 19-3, uh, relate the electric potential difference to the work. All right, well, this one's easy. If you know both of these definitions, then you can do this one. The, so what we're interested in now is the electric potential difference, not potential energy difference. We know about that already. That's up here, electric potential energy. Uh, but the electric potential difference is we're going to start here, and we're going to say, I'm interested in the change in this uh, electric potential. Well, a change in that one has to be a change in the, the right side as well. So we'll have put a delta over here. So that's what gives us this equation. Delta V equals delta EPE divided by Q naught. Well, we already know what delta EPE is. The change in electric potential energy is nothing more or less than the negative of the work done in going from point A to point B. So I can substitute the negative of the work done in here, and we've, we've, um, we've done it. That's, there's nothing more to it than that. Uh, but there will be a couple of problems that will relate the work done to the, electric, the change in potential, electric potential energy to the change in the electric potential, et cetera. And this is the explicit relationship between the change in the electric potential and the work done and the, the test charge. Um, lots of biomedical applications to the electric potential or voltage. Um, electrocardiography, the EKG so-called, is the measurement of small differences in the electric potential between different parts of the body. And we're talking about ranges of 30 to maybe 500 microvolts. What's a micro? 10 to the minus 6. So that's 30, maybe 30 uh, microvolts. That's 30 times 10 to the minus 6 volts. Tiny little uh, changes in, in voltage in your body that allow us to see what your uh, uh, to diagnose problems with your heart. Um, electroencephalography, EEG, is a measurement of small differences in the electric potential that characterize brain behavior. So normal brain rhythm uh, and an abnormal rhythm. Electroretinography is the measurement of small differences in the electric potential that characterize eye function. So again, potential differences um, measured in volts and um, to detect different, different problems with the eye. 